Welcome to the tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to cover an example of keys and doors in Sugarcube 2.36. In previous videos, we have looked at the macros set and if within Sugarcube. These allow us with set to create and change the value of variables. When we talk about variables, it can often be useful to think about them in the metaphor of a bucket. We can put things into a bucket, take things out of a bucket, as well as see what's inside that bucket. The idea of seeing what's inside that bucket is usually the phrase, the value of that variable. When we use the if macro, we create comparisons, generally the value of a variable, and then compare it with something else. Is it less than? Is it greater than? Is it equal to? When we're working with the set macro and the if macro, we also use a concept called expressions. When we're creating a variable or changing the value of a variable, we're using assignment expressions. When we're comparing the value of a variable to something else, we're creating conditional expressions. When we're working in Sugarcube, we need to be made aware of how we use these different macros as long as along with their associated concepts. So let's actually put everything I've now talked about into practice. How will we actually see this within an interactive story made within Sugarcube? So let's start by talking about how we create variables. I mentioned we use the set macro. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this passage right here. This creates a story variable. Remember, there are two categories of variables within Sugarcube, story and temporary. Generally, we use story variables. We want to create something to use across the story. So in this case, I am creating the variable key and setting it to the value 1. And of course, read from left to right within English, we would say this is set the story variable to the value 1. Notice I have a little bit of text right here, and then I immediately have us going to another passage. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because when we work with variables, especially story variables, and we want to set them up to use them in multiple cases later on, we should go ahead and probably do that very early on in the story, usually within our first passage, or if we have more advanced knowledge, which in particular special passages that allow us to set things up before we do anything else. In this particular example, I'm setting up the value of a variable as the very first thing I do. I'm going to be using this variable multiple times across the story. Then immediately we go to investigate. Investigate, as we're about to move into, has kind of two different branches it can go to, left side and right side. So let's go ahead and pull that up. So we can move to left side and we can move to right side. Now the left side is going to hold the key and the right side is going to hold the door. Now, we talk about keys and doors. We can talk about them literally as something a reader, as a character, needs to pass through. Or we can talk them a little bit more metaphorically. You need to speak to everyone within a room, or you, the reader or player needs to do a particular event before they unlock the next part of the story. In either case, the approach, programmingly speaking, is fairly the same. In each case, we're letting the reader or player do something once they've done it, and we know they've done it. We change the value of some variable and then use that change of the value of a variable to signal that whatever we need them to do is now done. So let's go ahead and move to the left-hand side to see what I'm talking about. So over here, I have the use of the if macro. Again, we create a comparison. And then I have right here the English word is. The English word is is a number of abbreviated forms that we can use as part of Twine script, just some additional things on top of JavaScript, the parent language Sugarcube is based on. It allows us to, if we want, to use a number of English words instead of their corresponding JavaScript equivalent. And again, both are perfectly valid, totally up to the author if they'd rather use Twine script equivalent or the JavaScript symbols. And this right here, I'm checking if the story variable key is one, do something. The do something in this case is allow a reader to see the link pick up key. Otherwise, they wouldn't see anything at all. If they see pick up key and they access it, they move to pick up key. Immediately, we're changing the value of a variable, set key to two. And in this case, we're returning to left side. When they come back to left side, key is no longer one, it's now two, and they wouldn't see the option to pick up the key a second time. Finally, moving over to the right side, we see that if key is one, they see a locked door. If key is two, we can unlock the door and move to the exit. So let me close all these and then 
let's go ahead and run through what this story looks like to actually play it. So notice immediately we have a setup. What is the reader doing? What is the player doing? They're entering a castle. The gate closes behind you. Notice it's just a single sentence just to sort of establish what's going on. I'm also following something I mentioned in a previous video of talking about text styling and the conventions common with an interactive story and many video games. In this case, I'm using something in parentheses to signal, potentially to a reader or player who knows this convention, that there's more they can do, or this is a potential action that interacts with the scene, in this case, investigate. And I see left side and right side. Notice I have the option to pick up a key. This is important as we start to think about interactivity as it applies to interactive stories, and as we think about potentially making things like a video games with Entwine. In cases like this, we want to leave some type of agency up to the player or reader so that they can make informed decisions about what they're doing. In this case, we're giving them information about what will happen if they make this choice. If they make the choice to pick up the key, they will pick up the key. We're not doing it to them, and we're allowing them to make that action. Now, other things may come as a result, other consequences that the player or reader are not made aware of, but in this particular case, if they pick up the key, they'll pick up the key. So let's go ahead and right now and not do that. Let's move over to the right-hand side. So we see a locked door, we come over to the left-hand side, and notice in each case I'm giving the reader or player, depending on what noun you want to use, information about what's going on. Potentially they pick up the key and they move over here, they see a locked door, they move over to the left side, and now things can start to kind of connect together. So let's go ahead and pick up the key. Return to the left side, and notice that this is now gone. So we can't pick up the key a second time once we've picked it up. That is, once we've changed the value of a variable internally, we're not picking up a second key, there's just one. Moving over to the right-hand side, we now see that the door is unlocked. You unlock the door, and now we can go to the exit, go back to the left, which sends us back to the right, and then finally we can exit and escape the castle. Throughout this, though, I am just using concepts we have seen in previous videos. We are using the set and if macro quite a number of times. We are also using variables, in this case just one variable, key. I'm also using TwineScript multiple times, the use of is and to English words that Sugarcube allows us to do. And again, we can use JavaScript symbols if we prefer, totally valid and up to the author. We can do quite a lot of things. We can create variables using the set macro. We can compare the value of variable to something else using the if macro. And then using the two of them, along with using passages and links, we can start to create more advanced stories. As we move forward in future videos, we will come back to these same ideas, reinforcing how we can build more advanced things by building concepts onto concepts. Thanks for watching.